Hello and welcome back to Subnautica. In the last two episodes we went out and explored the Aurora and we found the drive core had been damaged and we managed to repair some of the hull breaches that we found which as far as the computer has told us that should resolve the radiation leaks so give it a couple of days and uh, we should be able to start wearing better um, it's better diving kit once we find it. Uh, it's scattered around in various blueprints uh, as usual. And um, we did find some useful blueprints there. For instance, we can now build the, the prawn suit. Uh, we found some blueprints for the repulsion cannon. But um, there are quite a few outstanding logs that I want to play back and catch up on the radio messages and so on. So I've come back to base and I'm going to start playing those ones from the Degassi crew uh, that we picked up along the way. One thing I've noticed, mind, there was a, uh, there was a data entry here about LifePod 6 because I was wondering what happened to LifePod 6 because I got some information but I couldn't, I couldn't see anything on the Beacon Manager. If we go through here, there's, there's no mention of LifePod 6 here. So they go over to the data bank. Now this is interesting here, it's saying that um, they wanted help with radiation. It doesn't seem to be too far down, it's actually in the in the grassy plateau as far as we can see. 400 meters west northwest of life pod 4. But we haven't found life pod 4 yet. So I'm going to play back these uh, radio messages, see what we get from them. This is Life Pod 4. We've landed close to the Aurora. Flotation device is active, but we've got some big old fish in the water with us, and I don't know how long we're going to last. We're close to the crash site, so bring radiation protection. Four out. Signal coordinates corrupted. Approximate transmission origin recorded to data bank. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, we've got information about Life Pod 6 before we got information about life pod 4 but we need to find life pod 4 to be able to find life pod 6 so now that's saying it's about 150 meters northwest of its midsection so this is interesting so that's where the compass is obviously going to come in in useful because up to now we've been following beacons and there are no beacons for life pod 4 or life pod 6 so it seems the best thing to do would be to, to find life pod 4 first then based on that we should be able to then find life pod 6 so let me just double check okay so that's the radio messages done I'm just going to check the logs here because there were some left over from the Degassi crew now I'm not going to touch this one from Bart yet until later on. Um, kind of spoils things if you play that now. Although uh, we did get it, that was the first one we got of Bart, but I'm, as I say, I'm, I'll play it later. So we got as far as log number four for the Degassi crew, so I'm now going to start with entry number five. Now, I think what I'll do is I'll actually make some of these rather than waste a bit of time. There's some upgrades I can make here. So I think I'll play those logs and I'll start making some of these while we're on camera. Son, there is always a pecking order. And in our world, money makes a hierarchy. I pay Maida a fraction of what I pay you, and you a fraction of what I pay me. If money makes the hierarchy, why is Marguerite making the decision? We need her. We let her think what she likes, so long as she does what she's told. What if she doesn't? For enough money, she will. People always do. Okay, that was interesting. Yes, yeah, so there's obviously a bit of a conflict going on with Marguerite there wanting to do her thing now and the crew order seems to be getting into 
problems. Obviously, Paul was in charge to uh, of the actual Degassi, but maybe there could be problems with Marguerite later down the line. Right, so the next one is log number six. We'll play that now. We're already 200 meters below sea level. You want to go deeper? Look around us, Chief. Water leaking through the hull, water outside the hatch. We're drowning real slow. If rescue arrives, whatever shot us down, it's going to do it again and again until it's shut off. Do you see an off switch around here, Chief? Why would it any more likely be half a kilometer down? Your kid found something on the scanner. There's something down there. Something that shouldn't be. <laughs> You're mad! I'm going all the same, and I have an idea you two are going to follow. But if you do, be mindful. Your authority stopped at sea level. Okay, yeah, so there's obviously... Yeah, starting to run into authority problems. Uh, that's about as far as it goes, so... From what we can tell, it sounded like there was some interest to go deeper. And what we've got actually is a another habitat base. It seems that the build now that's that's 500 meters down. So that's quite a depth to go. Um, I'm just going to finish building these fins, but I needed needed some more lithium. I'll just go and get that because there's some. I think there's two depth modules we can now build to improve the depth that the, the Seamoth can go to. I'm pretty sure they'll be able to get us below that, that 500 metres. The only problem is it's a dangerous area. So I'm, I am tempted to basically wait until I get the, um, the Cyclops first. Right, so we've upgraded our O2 tank, so now we're up to, we've got up from, I think it was 135 to 225, so that's good. We've got better better fins, and we've now got a, a thermal blade, which allows us to basically hit the fish a couple of times to kill them, and it'll cook, it'll cook the fish straight away, so it's quite handy for, you know, if, if you're away. Yeah, from a from a flag of fabricator, you can cook fish on the fly. And I'll just try one of these ones here. There you go. So that's now cooked. So that's useful. I mean, you you can eat um, raw fish, but as far as my well, you certainly don't get as many as many food out of them. Pick that up if I can. Come here. Yeah, you you can eat a raw f a raw fish. You don't get as much food, but you actually lose oxy uh, you lose water. So it doesn't cause you any health damage. I think it did in the early game, but it doesn't doesn't now it seems. Um, I mean I'm on survival play. Next level up Welcome is hardcore. And in that one you just have a like basically you just have a life if you if you die, that's it. It's, you know, the game ends. Um, I didn't do that for this playthrough because it seemed kind of pointless. Because if I died, that's it. That would be the end of the series. Um, on the other hand, I could just go back to a save game and um, play through again. So, not really sure the benefit for doing it. Useful for yourself if you want to try it, but I um, uh, don't really see the interest if I'm doing it on a video. Um, there was something I was looking for. Yeah, it was water, wasn't it? Um, so I'm just going to go back here, see what else we can make. So you can convert the propulsion cannon into a repulsion cannon if you like. Um, we don't have a Cyclops yet. We haven't learned the blueprints for that anyway. For the prawn suit. You can improve the depth module on that, so we've learned the blueprints of that. The only trouble is it needs kyanite, and we haven't found that yet. Now for the sea moth, I need plasteel ingots, enamel glass, and two magnetite. Plasteel ingots, 
see, we know how to make that. So titanium ingots to lithium. So I've got that. So I think what I'll do is I'll pause the video. Um, because I'm pretty sure I've got what I need to be able to get as far as a Mark III depth module. Um, I've picked up quite a lot of rubies. One thing I'm going to have to do to make the enamel glass... Uh, let's just see where I've put these rubies. I've got them somewhere. should really label them. Yeah, I've got plenty of rubies. One thing you need to make the enamel glass is the stalker teeth. That's what uh, Bard had mentioned on one of his videos, and we've got the blueprint for it. Uh, yeah, so there's the enamel glass. So basically you just take some quartz to make glass, and then uh, mix that with stalker tooth, and that'll give you enamel glass. If you want to get those, basically go and look among the, uh, the creep binds for where the stalkers are, where they're playing with the metal salvage. Um, find some of them and there's usually stalker, like stalker teeth lying around on the ground. So I'm going to pause the video, go out and look for some of the actual uh, resources I need and then I'll bring you back once I'm ready to make those Mark II and Mark III uh, depth modules. Oh. Okay, um, brought you back a bit early than I planned because I found a stalker tooth over here. So as I say, I mean, it's if you go looking for where the stalker uh, fish are, are playing around with the metal, so it's wherever you find these creep vine clusters, basically. It's just a case of having a look for those stalker fish. And uh, usually you'll find a stalker tooth just nearby. So... They are a bit tricky to find, but it becomes a lot easier once I build the actual scanner room. So that's something I should really get done as soon as possible. But um, I'm going to carry on gathering the resources that I need and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I've gathered the resources that I needed. I needed um, quite a bit of lithium to make the, the plasteel ingots. So what I did was I got that from the um, Base where the the Degassi um, where the Degassi are, and I found that in the shale rocks. Yeah, you can also find it in. I think it was it was scattered around the area where Life Pod 19 is. But this is for me. This is happens to be closer to get it from where the Degassi base is. So I'll just park this. I need the upgrade module. So, right. At the moment, we're getting it down about 200 meters. Uh, that's the, that's what you start with. With this upgrade, you, you take it up to 300. That's 300 meters is uh, what you get with just the upgrade itself. So, this is the Mark II one. Let's see what the Mark II one could have done. Right, Mark 2. So Mark 2 would get us to 500 meters. So let's see what a Mark 3 can do. Mark three, right. So that, that's good. That'll take it down to about nine hundred meters. So that's uh, it's quite an improvement. That. Now I want to see if there's any any other upgrades we can make. Uh, titanium, lithium. So hull reinforcement we could, would be good. So titanium, lithium, and diamond. No, nope, let's just see if we can get out of the way of that. So I should have what's needed to make that one. The other ones I'm not so sure about. I think they need polyaniline. So I need some titanium. Uh, lithium, and I think there's three diamonds. 
Let's see if I can find it on here. It's a Seamoth hull reinforcement, so you need three, four diamonds, okay. Just need up three, so that's that gets us that. So we've got the gone as far as we can on terms of depth. Yeah, engine efficiency we'd need polyaniline. Perimeter defense polyaniline. Now, the torpedo system, we can do that with aerogel. Now, aerogel is ruby. Uh, it's in here. So that's ruby in a gel sack. So I'm just going to go outside and get a gel sack. Because I planted some of those outside here. So, I mean, my choice is here, I can either pick the gel sack up, if I slice it with the knife, I'll get about three seeds out of it. Uh, okay, that's that wasn't what I had intended to do. Um, I'll just pick that one up straight up. Right, so I've got three, three extra seeds in there. And I've got a gel sack that I can now create some aerogel with. So let's do that. Uh, advanced materials, aerogel. Okay, so we should have what we need to improve this a bit. Okay, so we can make hull reinforcement. So they're the torpedoes. Titanium and lithium, right, so I need three more titanium and lithium. I think I've just got one lithium uh, left. Yeah, it's down here. Yeah, that's handy. I'll have to get some more of that. Because there's quite a few things I'll be building that's going to need lithium. Right, so a torpedo system. Now, the torpedoes themselves, there's different ones. So, there are vortex ones and there are gas torpedoes. So, I think I'm going to need more titanium. So, titanium and magne uh, magnetite. I'm going to have to start gathering more titanium as well. Let's see, so titanium and magnetite. Oh, just enough. Uh, the other one was. Let's see what I mentioned. So that one needs titanium. So I need some. I need more. More titanium, but I also need those gas pods. So let's see. So. Should be able to make the Vortex ones. Okay, so that gives us two two of those torpedoes, so actually did I make the Yeah, so let's put these upgrades in and I'll pop the torpedoes in. Right, so that's our hull reinforcement. A torpedo. I wanna save save one at least for the efficiency engine module. Now, um, oh, what are we doing? I think I seem to swap them out. I'll just jump out. Just bring this outside. Right, there's the torpedo bay at the front. Right, by building that, it's it's actually given us two to air vortex torpedoes to begin with, so that was handy. So we've now got, we've got a capacity of up to six torpedoes. Uh, may as well repair this while I'm at it. Now what I need is, I need some more titanium. But I want some gas pods. Um, I'm just wondering if they make two. 
Well, we'll see. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll try and get a couple, I think. Uh, if I can find these, they'll be around here somewhere. Ah, there they are. The, the, it's quite tricky because you've got to try and catch the pods before they explode. May as well scan them while I'm here, to be honest. A gas a pod. It's obviously a defensive system for them. Right, ooh. Just about got that one. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Not good, not good. Right, so I've got two anyway. That'll, that's enough for now. Right, so let's see where. I need to go over there. So, let's see how many torpedoes these make. Um, actually, I needed some titanium, don't I? I mean, that's one thing now that I've got the moon pool, I'm not too bothered about using the lights on this. I don't have the power cell recharging, but all I've got to do is just put this in the, in the moon pool and the battery will get recharged straight away. I'll carry a spare anyway, just in case. Although I usually don't go that far, too far from the base anyway. At least not for long periods of time. It's okay, so let's uh, let's dock this and see what we can do for these these uh, other torpedoes. See if they make two. Make I'll have to break this titanium up first. Yeah, we'll see if they make two. In you know, if each uh, torpedo make makes two, or whether they're individuals. Uh, there's another message there I noticed, which I'll have to pick up. Let's see what that is. Ah, so it does, yeah, so that makes two as well, so I'll, I may as well create two. I'll put the, uh, I'll put these other ones into storage for now. But I'll want to test those out, see what they're like on, maybe the Leviathan. Well, I'd really, pre I prefer to do that when I've got a defensive system. Maybe that would help, su help survive longer. I mean, because I'm assuming I can fire these. You know, if if you're in the in the grip of a Leviathan, maybe you can fire a torpedo at it. Uh, alternatively, you just want to try and hit it before it gets too close. Right. So I don't know if I can reach these torpedo tubes while it's in the while it's in the moon pool. I think I think you've got to be outside. Take it back outside then. All systems online. Alright, so there's the torpedo bay. So we will put. Alright, so. So to select that, I pick number two. Right, okay, so that's how you select it. Question then is going to be rotating the torpedoes once you've picked that. It doesn't give me an option to rotate the actual torpedoes themselves. Okay, so. Well, anyway, I'm going to dock this because the next thing I want to do. I mean, we've upgraded the Seamoth as far as, it, as far as we can go for now. Let's see, we've got... <clears throat> yeah, I'm not too concerned about the sonar. So it's more the uh, the uh, perimeter defense next. But yeah, that, that's going to need polyaniline. So I think the next thing I want to make is the, is the scanner room, because that should make life a lot easier. And that needs... 
Okay, so we've got enough titanium. I need some table coral. Just do a quick check. Uh, see if I've already got any. I, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't have any. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get some table coral. Uh, then I'll bring you back when I'm ready to build a scanner room. Okay, so I had most of the uh, resources that I needed already. So I'll now just add in the scanner room, which just easily slots onto the end of that existing compartment there. It might have been able to plug directly into the actual habitat. Um, Holy purpose room. Let's see if that's possible. No. I thought I might have been able to just connect direct to the to the multi-purpose room. Anyway, we'll build this now, and then we can start making life a lot easier by scanning for things, but there are upgrades that you can get for this as well. Okay, so we're now on about 11.8 for our full integrity, so that's fine. I mean, that's just by putting that one reinforcement in. So, scanner room. Ah, very, very useful room. I mean, you see, you don't need uh, an entire base to, to build this. What I sometimes do is actually I'll build one of these scanner rooms, put it down in an area I want to visit, and explore for fragments, maybe. Put a couple of solar panels on the roof, attach a compartment, stick a hatch on, and, you know, it's self-sufficient. Self but what you can do is you can... You can actually scan for various things. Once it starts up, it learns what's in the nearby vicinity, so... You know, things like stalker tooths, uh, shale chucks, wrecks. There's quite a lot of different things it'll look for. One thing you wouldn't be able to find, for instance, is, say, like, copper. If I want to look for copper, unless it's like a copper deposit, my best option really is to look for limestone chunks. Uh, if I want gold, then I'll have to just look for sandstone chunks. I can't... it's not going to tell me what's actually in those and that you, you won't find the actual ores themselves. I mean, there must, in this case, there must be some lying around somewhere for it to be able to pick that up. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I'll, I'll start the scan off and see what it picks up, though. So, it takes quite a while, so it's found something down there. So you can see like, there's a little red uh, blip there. Now what you can do is you can improve this, so uh, that's the actual storage for it. So one of the things I do want to make is a scanner room hood chip, because although you're seeing like a little blip there, the problem is I can't quite make out where that is. Um, there's nothing on my hood to show, I just know somewhere within the vicinity, in roughly over there, wherever there is, there's this, there's a piece of copper. So, I definitely want this hood chip. That'll go into, say, that slot there, for instance. Now, that needs a computer chip and magnetite. Uh, you can make extra camera drones. The scanner room upgrade, that's an, something to add in, because it, um, it increases the range that the scanner can look out to. And then you've got the scanner room speed upgrade. So, let's see, so we need copper ore, magnetite, gold and silver. So I should have those in storage already. So, I'm going to gather those. I need. I might need to gather some other things for the computer chip. So I'm just going to gather the, uh, the resources that I've got, and then I'll bring it back when I'm ready to make the, the upgrades to that scanner room. Okay, so I should have enough resources to upgrade this um, scanner room. One thing I do want to point out though is I, I forgot these cameras. You get two drone cameras that come with the, the scanner room. So you can attach to them and they've got their own little heads up display. So they'll actually show you where these uh, things that you've scanned for actually are. So for instance out here you can see it's highlighting a a limestone chunk here. Now if I exit the camera I don't see any of this. 
I mean the camera's over there but I'm not seeing anything from here so until you actually upgrade the scanner um, what you could do is for instance you could take one of the cameras out and just literally hover it over where you know something that's, you, that it can find leave it leave it next to that and then you can just go and look for the camera because they've got their own beacon so that's one option you've got but one thing I've found though is that I mean I was mentioning the difference between say like looking for if you want to look for copper fin, for instance you really want to be looking for limestone chunks one strange thing I found is I, I set, set it off to just search for copper and oddly enough it did actually find a limestone chunk containing copper um, that was you know um, it wasn't too far away actually it was uh, yeah just about over there but that's that's all it found There's, there is one more I think it's I think it must be in the uh, the cave underneath the underneath where we're at but it, it hasn't picked up any more since so I set it to go and look for limestone chunks and um, it, it found quite a few one of them was right underneath where we're at in this scanner room and that contained copper so I wouldn't rely on it if you're gonna look for copper ore you're more liable to find copper deposits I think but uh, it's something that's worth testing out anyway just something to, to be aware of another thing about these cameras is what I found is that you get two with each scanner room you build now if you're going to build one of these and use it as a portable unit where you build it somewhere then deconstruct it and take it somewhere else if the cameras not uh, docked so at the moment this one is out out in the field so if I bring it back uh, I'll just drive it straight back to that little docking bay there so it's docked back in so I can dock that back in if I deconstruct this and then go off and build it somewhere else I'll have two cameras that get built with the scanner room if I leave that out in the field though you'll end up with a scanner room getting built with two cameras and this little camera just sitting here doing nothing they've only got a, a limited range as to how far you can go with them but what you can do is you can actually pick them up uh, and take them somewhere else but to be honest uh, personally I tend not to use more than one uh, camera anyway but they, they, are, they are quite useful for like exploring the local area um, especially when you're in depth uh, they're also um, useful if you do find something you just leave it there hovering over you know whatever it was you were looking for so in terms of these upgrades though so there is a HUD chip we can add in so that was a computer chip with some magnetite uh, then there's this one here which increases the range of detection that was copper and magnetite and then you've got this one which speeds up the time uh, that it takes to to do the scanning so we're not scanning for anything at the moment so I'll set it off for say like cave sulfur for instance so it's already picked something up over there now I've now got a new HUD chip and you can see already I can actually see where the scanner has detected cave sulfur for, for instance uh, it's picked up some more over there but if you want to stop that you're going to have to turn the scanner off and then a bit of time those will then disappear from your hood so let's see what we found um, data boxes that would be useful um, well it'll tell us where there's magnetite and salt and quartz so that makes it easy to find those stalk no oh, stalk a tooth that's useful as well shale chunk so it'll it'll also highlight things like fragments as well if it sees any in the but you've got to be within a certain area for it to, to actually you know report them in here if there's no f like fragments for instance in the area they won't show up here but there's supposedly a data bank down there so that could be handy something I'd, I'd definitely go out and have a look at 
another thing that I was um, going to build actually is we did actually pick up a blueprint for the, the water filtration unit. Now that's really useful that, so uh, interiors uh, interior pieces, so that needs titanium, copper and aerogel. So I've got enough copper and I've got enough to make the aerogel but I'm going to have to search sorry I've got enough, yeah I've got enough titanium I've got enough to make the aerogel but I'm going to have to go and search for copper again so what I'll do is I'll pause the video then I'm going to set this scanner off searching for limestone chunks probably and then I can actually go out and search for them so I'll set that off to scan wait a while until it starts populating it and that should make it easier for me to get some copper now so once I've got the resources then for that water filtration unit I'll bring you back okay so I've managed to gather resources uh, much much easier now uh, basically just turn the scanner on to search for limestone chunks some were copper, some were titanium so that was uh, made my life a lot easier did it all in a lot quicker as well so these uh, water filtration machines have got to be you've got to be placed up against one of these side uh, panels so you know, if there's anything in the way obviously you can't put them there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that one for the power cell uh, recharger so I'll just put the water filtration unit there Okay, so the pull strength went down a bit, not too much. But what this is going to now do is it's now going to start pulling in water and it'll start giving us water and salt. The only thing it does do is it, at least in previous experience, it's used quite a lot in terms of power. Uh, we still seem to be supplying quite a lot of power at the moment. Might get a bit of worse at night, but I'll keep an eye on it. Uh, so if we give it time especially if you come back and visit the base uh, it might suddenly just start dispensing like water and salt um, just close that so gives you a rough idea as to how long it's going to take and it's got a uh, an inventory of its own so it'll actually store I think it's about like two salt and two water so that's another another easy way to get salt and water in the game because you'll need the salt if you want to cure fish you always want the water I'm just going to check how the bioreactor is doing. They're still doing well. Still got about three fish, so I mean, that's it's proving really, really handy. This having this now, it's very easy to keep it topped up. I can just take, you know, take like a potato plant, uh, put that in, and there's another source of biomaterial for it uh, to digest. So. I think that's it for this video. What we've achieved is to upgrade our Seamoth over there. It's got better defences now. It's got a much better reinforcement. And um, yeah, so we've got much better in hull reinforcement. It can go to much deeper depths. I think it was about 900 metres now. We've got a torpedo system that we can check out. But um, the perimeter defence, you're going to need need to find polyaniline and we don't have the blueprints for that yet um, something else we could be building as well in, in the next video is going to be the prawn but um, I'm quite pleased with getting this filtration machine as well that's that's another good uh, thing to get uh, put into your base makes life a lot easier so that's it for this video I do hope you've enjoyed it if you have, then I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like. And if you want to see more content, then do please subscribe. Thanks. Bye.